any time. I now recognize myself for an opening statement. Today, the committee will examine one of the darkest days in our nation's history, the January 6th insurrection at the United States Capitol. On that day, a violent mob incited by shameless lies told by a defeated president launched the worst attack on our republic since the Civil War. It was harrowing and heartbreaking. We watched as the temple of our democracy, a building we're as familiar with as our own homes, was overrun by a mob bent on murdering the vice president and members of Congress. The mob's goal was clear. They were trying to prevent the peaceful transfer of power to the newly elected president by halting the counting of electoral votes. This insurrection failed, but not before police officers were attacked and had to use deadly force to protect members of Congress. Shots were fired mere feet from the House floor. Because of this horrific attack, four private citizens died, three police officers lost their lives. Had it not been for the heroic men and women of law enforcement who faced down the mob, there would have been even more bloodshed that day. We know who provoked this attack. That is why 17 House and Senate Republicans joined all congressional Democrats in the bipartisan effort to impeach and convict, and, and, for, and, for, and I quote, inciting violence against the government of the United States, end quote. To quote Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, quote, there is no question, none, that President Trump is practically and morally responsible for provoking the events that day, end quote. But the failures of January 6 go beyond the craven lies and provocations of one man. The federal government was unprepared for this insurrection, even though it was planned in plain sight on social media for the world to see. And despite all the military and law enforcement resources our government can call upon in a crisis, security collapsed in the face of the mob, and reinforcements were delayed for hours as the Capitol was overrun. It is our duty to understand what went wrong that day, to seek accountability, and to take action to pre prevent this from ever happening again. We are joined today by the Chief of D.C. Metropolitan Police Department, Robert Conte. On January 6, Chief Conte and his officers did not hesitate to answer the call. And over 800 D.C. police officers voluntarily rushed to the aid of the Capitol. D.C. police stood side by side with the Capitol Police and displayed tremendous heroic actions. Chief Conti, we are in your debt. We also have with us two cabinet heads from the Trump administration who led key federal agencies on January 6. Neither has publicly testified about their role in these events, and I appreciate their willingness to testify today. Former Acting General Jeffrey Rosen led the Department of Justice which was reportedly designated as the lead federal agency for coordinating security in Washington on January 6. The potential for violence that day was clear. In December, the New York Police Department warned the FBI that certain press protesters viewed January 6 as an opportunity for violent revolt. Then again, on January 5th, the FBI office in Norfolk, Virginia, warned that extremists were discussing, quote, specific calls for violence against Congress on January 6, end quote, including a message to, quote, go there ready for war, end quote. The Justice Department and the FBI have a special duty to warn of domestic terrorist threats. Yet it's clear that despite all of this intelligence, the federal government was not prepared. Today, more than four months later, we're still in the dark about exactly what went wrong. Did the Trump administration fail to adequately prepare for violence because it had a blind spot for right-wing domestic terrorism? As the lead agency 
on January 6, why did the Department, the Justice Department, fail to coordinate an effective and timely response to the attack on the Capitol? We simply do not know. In part, that is because neither DOJ nor the FBI have produced a single piece of paper in response to the request sent by six House committees, including this one in March. Not a single piece of paper, not a single document. This is completely unacceptable. I was hoping to have FBI Director Christopher Wray here today to address the unanswered questions about the FBI's actions. I sent him multiple inv invitations and even rescheduled this hearing twice, but he declined to appear. However, I am pleased to announce that Director Ray has agreed to appear before this committee in June, and I look forward to his testimony then. Our final witness today is former Acting Secretary of Defense, Christopher Miller, who led the Department of Defense on January 6. When the Capitol came under siege, the Capitol Police were badly outnumbered. The world looked to the Department of Defense to protect our government from attack. Yet DOD did not authorize the deployment of D.C. National Guard troops to the Capitol until nearly four hours, four hours after local officials first pled for help. Even though we were under full-scale assault, DOD hesitated until Vice President Pence, not President Trump, gave the order to, quote, clear the Capitol, end quote. DOD's explanations of its own actions have failed to address critical questions. Why did military leaders place unusual restrictions on commanders on the ground? Mr. Miller says that he first learned that the mob had entered the Capitol between 1 p.m. and 1.30 p.m. So why did the Defense Department wait until after 5 o'clock, 5 p.m., before sending the National Guard to the Capitol? Today's hearing will not be the end of our investigation. This committee, along with other committees in the House, will continue to seek a full accounting of this attack. Even today, our colleagues in the House Administration Committee are asking tough questions of the Inspector General for the Architect of the Capitol. This oversight is essential, but we also need an independent, bipartisan commission focused on investigating the root causes of this insurrection. The 9-11 Commission has taught us that even in our most difficult moments, we can come together as one and answer hard questions, as we did as a Congress after 9-11. The 9-11 Commission made dozens of recommendations to overhaul our nation's security and intelligence operations, and Congress followed through in a bipartisan way, passing legislation to implement most of the Commission's bipartisan proposals. We need that same determination, that same resolve and action today. This nation stands at a crossroads, and the path we choose will define American democracy for generations to come. We must reject President Trump's big lie and the violent insurrection it inspired. No member of Congress, whether a freshman representative or a House conference chair, should face punishment for speaking the truth about what happened that day. As Congresswoman Cheney said last night, and I quote, remaining silent and ignoring the lie emboldens the liar. We must speak the truth. Our election was not stolen, and America has not failed." End quote. It is time for the American people and this Congress to look at the events of January 6 and say, never again. 
I now recognize the disting disting distinguished ranking member, Mr. Comer, for an opening statement. And I 